uh, as we continue our study in Revelation 15, 16, I'd like to share with you some thoughts that are related to uh, not just end times, but maybe some things now. And I'm going to begin reading in Revelation 15 and verse uh, 5 and down to the end of the passage there, that chapter. And after that I looked, behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen, having their breasts girded with golden girdles. One of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. No man was able to enter into the temple till seven plagues of the seven angels was fulfilled. So chapter 16 then begins to describe uh, the different plagues that are going to come from these. Let's open with prayer. Father, bless us in these few moments as we look into your word, as we consider end times, as we recognize that we truly are living on the uh, precipice of, of the end of an eon, that uh, the Lord's return is imminent. I pray that as we uh, look in your word, our hearts will be encouraged, that we think about some things here that are significant even to how we live yet. And I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I want to remind you of a couple things. On this Wednesday night and this coming Sunday, everything is virtual. And for those of you who are concerned uh, concerning health issues, I do have um, water of hydration here. I trust that uh, um, that uh, lets you understand that this is a, a process of um, sensibility as well as um, affliction. Anyway, I'd like you to uh, consider with me the verses that I just read and understand that uh, the last of the tribulation, the time that is worse than the, any other part of the tribulation, is in that condition because God is going to use the temple in heaven like he's never used it before. The temple on earth was defiled. Um, it's been defiled regularly through the centuries. But the one in the uh, book of Revelation that was constructed to be part of probably the peace treaty that the Antichrist forms with the Jewish people has been desecrated by the Antichrist going in and portraying himself as God, very God. At that moment in time, it is truly desecrated. A remnant of the Jews perceiving that this is not the true God, immediately run for safety. And they're in the wilderness, and the Bible tells us that they've been swallowed up and they're going to be protected by God himself. Meanwhile, the Antichrist and the devil are going to be pouring more wrath upon the nation of Israel, Israel especially, but all mankind generally. But God... But God says, that's not the temple. <laughs> I've got the temple. And I'd like us to consider several things in relationship to this. I'd like you to see that the temple is where God is going to maintain his holiness and his righteousness. And whether his acts are in mercy or whether his acts are in wrath, they all come from the temple. The temple was especially charged with the business of God's holiness. Uh, mankind, regardless of what you might identify the various problems on this planet are, are all ultimately matters of unholiness. We have marred the figure. We have mocked the God of creation. We have desp despised his commandments. And uh, every problem on this planet, even the pandemic, <laughs> is traceable to a matter of holiness. And so God is going to remedy Earth's issues with holiness. I think it's interesting that this is consistent with Scripture. In the Old Testament, the, uh, the work of God working on his people was handled by 
the tabernacle and the priests that were there. It's amazing how God used the priesthood to defend his holiness. One day Moses had to holler out because of sin, who is on the Lord's side? We're told that the Levites stood up and took the cause on. One day there was sin in Phineas of Aaron's family. A high priest jumped up and was zealous for the house of God. It's no different in this situation. I would have thought, maybe you would have too, that God would have uh, released from his battlements the, the uh, warring angels underneath the Michael with his swinging sword and uh, the artillery of heaven would have opened up and we'd have seen a part of heaven that is related to a, an army. There is a host in heaven. But that's not what happens. It's the temple. And the place where most of our lives we've been so focused on the, the mercies of God. Where the mercy seat is. But God's holiness also must deal in wrath. We understand this. This isn't a foreign concept, but it's on full display here. Secondly, it tells us they're carrying these vials. These vials are, are sort of wide, shallow pans, kind of maybe on the line of a Chinese wok. Uh, they're easily tipped, easily spilled, and really the focus is on how quickly the components that are going to be in them are going to be poured upon earth. This is not going to be a slow developing train wreck. <laughs> this is going to be an intense, rapid, devastating dealing out of God's holiness upon mankind. Then thirdly, I'd like you to understand that as we would read in the chapter 16, that every time a judgment is unleashed, there is no repentance. Men do not turn back to God. Men do not change their hearts or their minds. Men instead raise up in wrath and anger, knowing full well this is the God of heaven, that this isn't the hand of man, that this isn't... Uh, man and his clever devices, but this is God. And they aren't at all willing to bend. They're not willing to bow. And so it brings us to this last thought. When man is going to be affected by God for his repentance, it's because of God's love. Chapter 16 is, is a focus on God's wrath and his holiness. It's connected to his love. But it's to a point where it seems as if mercy is no longer around. That, that brings us to our present day. This is the chance. This is the only time we have to focus on God's mercy. There's a day coming in which the door of mercy will be closed. It even tells us the temple is going to be blocked. No man will be able to enter. Some Bible scholars say that is an indication that the mercies of God have come to an end. Something to think about as we consider our study of the end times. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the power that it is and it holds. I ask that you would work in the hearts of those who hear this. And if there's any who are still resistant to the mercies of God. If they'd recognize there is a line that is drawn, a line between God's mercy and God's wrath. Oh, that these people who hear would recognize that now is the time of salvation. Pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.